It was called Shio, Shio, and I, I think that's spelled S-H-E-O-U-L maybe? Shio, Hades, we know Hades, okay? But Shio or, Shio was the place of departed spirits, okay? Now you had the good departed spirits and you had the bad departed spirits. And if you'll remember uh, in Luke 16, that Sheol had two, two sides. Because remember in Luke 16, uh, Yeshua is talking about, uh, he, it's a, a parable, but whenever he said there was a certain man, he wasn't talking about a parable, he's talking about an actual, a certain man, and there was a beggar named Lazarus. Now this was not the Lazarus that was raised. But it was uh, the beggar, Lazarus, and the rich man. Do y'all remember that story that Yeshua <laughs> Told. It's in Luke 16, 22 through 26. But uh, Hades or, or Shaul, or Shaul, Sheol, Shaul is Paul's name. <laughs> um, Sheol, it was where the departed spirits went, but there was a gulf in between it, just like these two, two areas right here. This is where the fire was, where the evil departed, and this is where the righteous went which was called paradise, or Abraham's bosom. Abraham's bosom. And the scripture says, uh, and, and you can look it up, we don't have time to read the whole thing, but talking about the rich man, it says in hell, he lifted up his eyes and he saw Abraham way over here. Shay can look over here and she can see Brother Raymond. So the rich man was over here and he could see from Sheol to paradise. He could see over there. And he said, Father Abraham, Father Abraham, send that Lazarus who was in, in the bosom of Abraham. He said, send him over here. He's still ordering people around. You know, to dip his finger in the water from the garden and touch it to my mouth over here. And Abraham, Abraham could see over there too. So that, that tells us something, that there is a great divide, but they could see from one side to the other. Okay? And the scripture says there was a, a, the Abraham said there is a great gulf between you and me. A great gulf in between. And the scripture goes on uh, it, to where the rich man was, was saying, uh, Father Abraham, tell, send somebody or tell somebody to tell my brothers so they won't come to this place over here. He said, there's torment over here. There's fire over here. There's dryness. He said, send somebody back to tell them. And what Yeshua said that Abraham said was even if one rose from the grave and told them, they would not believe. He was prophesying about his own self because he was raised and people still did not believe. Still did not believe. In his life, he told them. He told them. And that's what Abraham said to the rich man over here. He said, in your life, you got everything that you wanted, and you treated Lazarus, but now he's over here. He's over here, and he's getting his reward in paradise. In paradise. This is the place in paradise, or Abraham's bosom, when Yeshua was on the cross, and he said, it is finished. And the scripture said, he that ascended first descended. This is where he went, over here, to get all of these that were over here. All of the righteous dead. All of the saints, if, if you will. This is where he went. And in Ephesians 4, 9, and 10, uh, you will see where it says, he that ascended first descended into the deep. And he led captivity captive. Those that were in the holding place. Now this is not purgatory. This is not purgatory. But this is where the Old Testament saints were. Where Abraham, in Abraham's bosom. The ones that were looking in faith and living for Messiah to come. He came down and got all of those. And he said, come on, we're going out of here. And it says he led captivity captive. And so when he went up, that's when the, the graves were open and they came out too. That's when, after his resurrection, 
That's what the scripture says. And you, uh, uh, there's a, a psalm, Psalm 16 and, and 10, where David is prophesying. You know, we don't necessarily look at David as though he were a prophet, but he prophesied in the Psalms so much about Messiah. So much. I mean, the actual words. And this one, Psalm 16 and 10, he says, Thou will not leave my soul in hell. And it's translated shield. Uh, Hades, the world of the dead underneath there. He said, you will not leave my soul in hell. And you say, well, that's talking about David. No, he said, neither will you suffer your holy one, capital letters, your holy one, to see corruption. So Yeshua didn't go over on this side where the weeping and the wailing and the gnashing of, of the teeth were because these died not in faith. And he, he didn't stay, he didn't receive the torment, but he went down to get those that believed in him. And like David had prophesied, Father did not let not one ounce of corruption come upon Yeshua. And he came up as the first fruits of those in the very same way. When we go down and our bodies go to sleep, if we were to die today, our spirits are in heaven, y'all. Because the scripture says to be absent from this body. When you zip it off, you are present with the Lord. But that's your spirit. Yeshua always talked about the saints being asleep. Remember when the little girl uh, was standing there? He said, she's not dead, she's just asleep. Because we, the, our bodies are just will, will just be asleep in the ground waiting for that last trump. And the voice of the archangel. Okay, is that, that making sense to you today? Uh, today, paradise or Abraham's bosom or this side of the of Sheol right there, it's empty. It's empty. And nobody else goes on that side no more. Now, you can go over to this side if you want to go. You know, and, and that's a free choice that everybody has. The fire side is still full. It is still full. But the paradise side, it is empty. It is empty. And it, there's no longer a holding place because Messiah has come. And for those that believe, what did he say? Those that live and believe in me, you ain't never going there. You're never going there. You're going straight up to heaven. Straight up to heaven. Okay? On that resurrection day. Um, let me just close, because we only have five minutes left, um, with 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians. It's back there with all the T's. First Thessalonians 4 and 16. Okay. So from, from the time that the lamb was suffered, the Passover lamb, Yeshua, was sacrificed and rose, there was no more entering in by the blood of a lamb. He was the one sacrifice. And if you didn't receive that sacrifice, then there was no sacrifice for sin. There is no sacrifice for sin except him. Okay? And 1 Thessalonians 4.16 says that those that are waiting for God are the bodies that are waiting for God now. This is what this scripture talks about. Um, it says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Those bodies, those that are dead in Christ, they will rise first. And then we which are alive and remain will be caught up with them into the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. That is what Christ's resurrection has done. And you say, well, that's, that's so forward thinking. So the resurrection power can raise anything this day. 
things on the inside of you, and even what I pray for. There's many people whose dreams, they have let them die. They have let them die. Remember, as we're taking this communion today, this is the Passover meal. Remember, Yahshua said, whenever you drink this cup and you eat this bread, remember me. Remember, and that's not th think about and think about, but it's remember what I bought for you. What I bought for you. And I sealed it, Father sealed it, when he raised him from the dead. So when you're taking this cup and you're eating this bread today, know that resurrection power is even within you. It's e and you are taking that, that New Testament, that new covenant, which he said all the promises in me are yea and amen. Yea and amen. And he said this is my body that was broken. For what? So you could walk around sick? No. So we could have not only healing, but divine Amen. health. Amen. We're taking in covenant. We're taking in health. We're taking in everything that the passion of this week bought us. Amen. Amen. So uh, th this, some, some people uh, think of it as a ritual. No, this is so holy, it's ridiculous. Amen. It is ridiculous. You are taking into you resurrection power. He said, every time that you do it, remember what I bought you. Remember that. And walk in it. And walk in it. B'Shem Yeshua. Father God, I just thank you for this day. Father, I, I thank you that, that you sent your son and the seed of the woman crushed the seed of the serpent. Father God, this day, we, we just say, Thank you for all of the blessing. The, the scripture says that you have blessed us with all blessings in heavenly places. And we are spiritually, we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. This love is mind-boggling to us that we would be called your sons and your daughters. And we thank you for the position that we have in Yeshua. In his name we do pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Oh, Hallelujah.